You're listening to the Out of Bounds Show podcast powered by the Sportsbook at Golden Moon Casino at the Pearl River Resort. To get in on the action, visit Golden Moon Casino today. WRKS Pickens Jackson. You ready? Let's go! Now live in the Bank Plus studio, where college football meets the all-lifestyle. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Out of Bounds Show with Bo Bounds. Streaming around the world live at the Out of Bounds radio app. And on your radio at ESPN 105.9. Where are you? The Zone. All right, good morning, welcome in. The show is brought to you by... Dr. Kirk Jeffries and Eye Care Professionals. Two locations on Lakeland Drive, one in Jackson and one in Flowood, Bell Mead. Eye Care Professionals, Dr. Kirk Jeffries. LASIK and cataract surgery, routine eye exam. Dr. Kirk Jeffries and Eye Care Professionals. He will take care of you. Take care of your eyes. Weird stuff going on here. Not with eye care professionals, but with my microphone. Um, this is 1059 The Zone, ESPN W R K S. And I want to thank you for going to Apple Podcast and searching the Out of Bounds show and listening to the podcast. Shout out. Thank you for doing that. Uh, we would love for you to go to Apple Podcasts, type in the Out of Bounds show or Bow Bounds, whatever. And um would love for you to also subscribe if you feel like it um it would it would make Blake's life better correct yeah <laughs> so um Blake Mania who's done a great job along with Will the Thrill and others um Apple Podcast search the Out of Bounds show and we've uh we feel like we've created and generated some some fun content right and Ron, Roll Tide Ron Fowler was good this week. Mike Dettelier was awesome. His he, he shared another John Madden story with us. Give me some of that. Um, he talked about the Saints. And um, Tom Luganville was good. And we've had a really, really good week. Steve Palazzo just knocked it out of the park on the NFL and Dak and the Cowboys. And, boy, they're going to have their hands full with that San Francisco 49ers team with Kyle Shanahan and all the weapons that they have mm. on offense. So that could be just an awesome game. Um, you remember when Dak beat Russell Wilson at home in the mm. playoffs? That thing was was an absolute heavyweight fight. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to beat a Hall of Famer in the playoffs. Uh, Garoppolo's not that guy, but he's a good player. But they've got some super-duper um, skill players, just like the Cowboys. So we'll see how that looks. It's in Dallas. I don't think uh, the one thing that Jerry's world uh, didn't do was give you a home field advantage. Yes. It's so corporate and and big. So it's not like when you go play uh, at Cincinnati this weekend and they'll be going nuts or you're playing in Buffalo and they're outside going crazy or the Chiefs. Um you know, the one thing that they lost doing this super off-the-charts modern stadium and spending a fortune, which it's worked out for Jerry, is <laughs> there? there's not that home field on top of you advantage you with, s- with Jerry's. You AT- see the AT&T, same. AT&T, whatever it is. You is, say, it, you, is it AT&T yeah, Stadium? Yeah, AT&T like? Stadium. Okay. Yep. These things change so much, I can't, I can't yep. always... Uh, keep up with what they are you see the same issues in la for yeah, the rams, for the rams are not going to have a yeah a super duper edge of your seat i will say but maybe the cowboys step up this weekend and generate some i don't know well, well they have so this was actually a thread that i saw uh maybe oh gosh sunday or monday where one of the cowboys nation's twitter accounts was like talking about fan interaction dak prescott and this kind of recent string of like 18, 19, 20, 21, the Cowboys fans have been light years better in terms of home field attendance than they were in the stretch with Romo. Okay. Which is kind of weird because Romo had some good seasons. Yeah. But it was like they were still sung ho- so hungover from the 2000s that there wasn't buy-in. 
right? Right. And for some well, reason, and there's... Jerry did such a poor job with head coaching hires. Well, that's true too. Jason... What a disservice yeah. to Romo, who was much better than several quarterbacks who have won the Super Bowl in the 2000s. No doubt. Um, but but he was surrounded yeah. by idiots. Yeah. And uh, when you're in the in the NFL, like you were talking about, you referenced it during the break. All these games, I mean, there's just not a penny's worth of difference in any of these rosters. Yeah. And we just don't, other than the Steelers, maybe. That's the only one, but, but, yeah. But outside of that, man, the, the that's why the NFL is better than college football playoffs is because, you know, these teams all have yeah. unbelievable players and organizations and and everybody's got to be good. It's just not the case that we get in college football when you get a game between, you know, uh, Bama and Vanderbilt or even... Bam and MSU and Ole Miss this, this year. Um, out of bounds, 105.9 The Zone, ESPN, brought to you by Dr. Kirk Jeffries, eye care professionals. Eye care professionals. So, the best QB matchup this weekend is Kyler Murray and Matthew Stafford, according to Palazzolo. Uh, it's a pretty good one with Garoppolo and Dak. And um, Derek Carr and Joe Burrow, that's not bad at all either. And we'll see if the Eagles can give the Buccaneers some fits. At some point. Now, let's switch gears. We were talking about Ben Hallen and Kermit Davis Jr., Blake, and we started the show with, because of football and baseball, there's just not, I mean, man, you, you, you've you got to be pretty savvy and, and good and fun to get any kind of buzz because in the world we are, in the, where we are in the state of Mississippi right now, it is football and baseball and hunting. And then some other things that we like to do. Crawfish at mud bugs and so on before basketball. And then the fact that they threw in the mass stuff. Mm. I mean, nobody was going to the games at the hump or the pavilion. No, they're and then they not. throw in, yeah. you know, and we know that masks don't work. And so then they throw in the mask thing. And boy, that that gives, because I'm not, I'm not going to wear, I'm not doing that. And so, uh, and Kermit's got a little bit more personality and bite than Ben Hallen. They're both good coaches. It's just not the buzz and the juice is not there. And I don't know if it's going to be there. Now, Ole Miss extended Kermit Davis Jr. in like November. Yeah. Ben Hallen, you know, you just kind of feel like if Ben doesn't get there this year, that maybe he and John Cohen come to an agreement. Maybe they don't. Yeah. I mean, Ben may be sitting there thinking, I'm in Starkville, Mississippi, guys, and I'm doing a good job. And he is winning over 20 games a year for the most part, one tournament and some NITs. The state fan base still longs for the 2001 to 2009 time. Take out the 96 Final Four. The 01 to 09 time where Rick went to six tournaments. Actually, it was between 02, I think. Uh, 02 and 09, he, he went to six tournaments. And, you know, Derek Zimmerman and Timmy Bowers and Mario Austin and Lawrence Roberts and all that, Shane Power. Um, and, and at a time where you didn't get the games on TV, Blake, so people, and this is beyond comprehension today, people would actually get in the car and drive, and drive up, yeah. to Humphrey Coliseum on a Wednesday. Yeah. And I don't remember when it went four lane, but some of this was two and some of it was four. Yeah. And would actually go and watch a game at Humphrey Coliseum and drive back to Jackson, yeah. Mississippi. My dad did it a couple of times with us when I was in school. Unbelievable. Yeah, I can remember. Do you remember I, we the did night? too? I mean, I did it in the I did it in the eighties when Jeff yeah. Malone was was yeah. was at, at and Cal Patrick to, Wells and Chauncey Robinson yeah. and, and so on. You had to ride your horse and buggy up. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Actually, uh, my dad had a '56 Thunderbird. Oh. It wasn't his main car, but it was pretty you, cool. We would take that to Startville sometimes. Do you remember the night Kentucky? That's on two lanes. That's right. Do you remember the night Kentucky and State played on either a Tuesday or Wednesday, and it went down to the wire, and State got hosed on that call, and yeah. they threw all the bottles? Up? Yeah. So that night I was there as a high school student, and it snowed that night. Oh, really? Yeah. So the whole drive back, it was like one of those Microsoft screensavers. It was black, pitch black, and all you saw was the snow fly Oh, past, yeah. And it was really cool. Needless to say, we drove back. And I think that was two lane time. I, I, can't I can't remember, remember no, I when it so. went four lane. That was like 08 or something. 09. Oh, okay. So okay. Been, okay. So it was yeah. a little bit later in Rick's career. Yeah. Yeah. I was okay. in high school. So it was like 08, 09, okay, something like it, that. Uh, that was, yeah. It was four lane by then, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. We booked it. That, that changed the game for, yeah. for Starville. Yeah. Um, 
Is Kendall still being feisty today on the Ag Up Equipment yeah. text line? He's in he's in di- timeout. Wow. Is he on probation? Okay. Ag Up Equipment text line is 601-885-3776. The show is brought to you by the Crawfish and Sh- You're listening to the Out of Bounds Show podcast, powered by Tito's Handmade Vodka. Try a Tito's Handmade Margarita today. Guys, Jeff Levy is doing some work. 38 years old, evidently loves to uh, recruit. Kind of Hugh Freeze, Rick Stansberry. Just won't put the phone down. What is going on in Oklahoma? Are they in the mix? For Jackson Dart out of Southern Cal? We'll see what happens there. And where does Caleb Williams out of Oklahoma land? Does he go to Southern Cal? Is UCLA in the mix? Georgia? Or others? Ole Miss would love to sign Jackson Dart out of Southern Cal. Got to get him on campus. (laughs) <laughs> oh man this is the 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 transfer portal but but the qbs is just the the musical chairs that we now have between all these players moving around is unbelievable and uh we'll see jackson dart is a southern cal qb in the portal making the rounds Ole Miss would like to pick him up this weekend. But we'll see what happens. See how many other schools are in the running. Caleb Williams hasn't made a decision, or that we know of, yeah. hasn't made a decision. He started at Oklahoma the last seven games or something of the year. And, uh, you know, Ole Miss still trying to land on a transfer portal quarterback to maybe uh, give them some wiggle room with Luke Altmeyer. If Jeff Levy was still employed by the University of Mississippi, would they have a transfer quarterback in the boat already? Absolutely. Is that a scary thought when you kind of analyze what that means about Lane Kiffin and what he's doing in Oxford? Or in Boca? Uh I, I do think that there's some concern. They could still pull this off. I mean, if they get Jackson Dart, they're going to be thrilled. I don't. He may be great. He may be okay. He may be, I don't know. Bottom line is, it's a body, four-star guy, Southern Cal, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know who else is, you know, but we'll see who is out there that you could bring in to give you more competition in the room with Luke Altmaier. You feel like Luke can play, but you're... You'd probably like to have somebody next year. Well, there's uh, no different. Jackson Dart is not any more. Ex- well, I say that he only played like six games this year, and he's a fresh. Like it's not like he's like it's. You're not bringing in a junior who's played a bunch of time, right? right? Or a senior who's played a bunch of time. Like the differences in him and Luke Altmaier are not staggering, staggeringly different in terms of how much time he's played. Well, Luke didn't play at all. I know. Other than when Matt Corral got. Knocked out in the uh, Sugar Bowl. I get that, but six games is not like, and especially in the Pac-12. Well, I understand it, with Pac-12's what was a dead man garbage. walking staff. Yeah, you know. But he's he's supposed to be. I mean, yeah, he is a very talented dude, highly rated coming out of high school. And let's see what he did this year. Um, he threw the ball 189 times, completed 117 for 62 percent, uh, 1300 and change yards, nine TDs, five picks. There you go. So. That's some good. Um, dang, they didn't win a game. Not a runner. No, he he didn't so. run the football. Uh, what was his best game here? It looks to me like it was against UCLA. He was Jackson Dart was twenty seven of forty seven for three twenty five and a TD and two picks. 
That maybe that wasn't his best game. Let me ask. And they lost sixty-two to thirty-three. Well, no, that was eleven twenty. Uh, 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 hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was. It was. It was. Let Let me ask you this Sorry. question. Whoa. Maybe it was Arizona. Well, but he didn't really sling it much. Uh, he slung it a good bit against BYU. They almost won the game. Okay. Anyway, it's sad when you're trying to figure out which loss is his best win game. That's that's okay. a tough. That's a tough. Place they beat to Arizona, but Arizona's not any good. Um, Mississippi State plays Arizona this year. That's right. They'll what, need to win that game in Tucson if they want to have a, you know, good year. Go ahead. What are you concerned that with Levy? Who it, it seems the more we learn that Levy was the mastermind behind the recruiting portion of what was going on in Oxford. And he kind of was the gung ho, like he was the one that was going to get that recruiting work done, and and kind of he, he did it all. Pull Lane, that Lane together. is the guy that comes in at the very end, seals it up, right? Yeah. So when you realize that you hired an OC who has never ever recruited on any level close to what Levy was trying to do at Ole Miss, and you don't have a DC, and your head coach is in Boca, I mean, where are you sitting if you are an Ole Miss football fan? Because that's some I I just again I go back to what we talked about last week, which is this feels like the most deflated post-10-2 and two season I can ever think of. Well, it was the best regular season they've ever had. And yet you would think that they were in the same boat Mississippi State was, that they just lost the Liberty Bowl. That's how it feels. It's going to be fascinating to see if they can flip this roster through the tr- – if there's still time the next couple of weeks slash few months to flip this roster through the transfer portal to be super competitive in 2022. Do you have any belief that Lane Kiffin is seriously being courted by the NFL? Probably not. There are like, rumors from Minnesota I, insiders that he's been linked to the Vikings. Right, job. It, we mentioned that, and and you know, I, man, John Gruden was linked to Tennessee, so it is what it is, right? right? Like, I, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lane wanted the Miami job. That would be the U Hurricanes. Yeah, I'm sure he loved the Dolphins job too. But I mean, again, he likes to be down in Boca Raton. I don't blame him. Um, but I don't. He's not going to get the Dolphins job that I know of. But uh, look, he wanted the U job. He didn't get it. Cristobal decided to say yes to both his alma mater and his hometown. And you may be getting a little of those repercussions right now. There's still an overwhelming majority of the fan base that's not that doesn't live and breathe on every transaction, believe it or not, mm-hmm. at Ole Miss and MSU. There is still the overwhelming fan base is still all in on the lane train. Interesting. I mean, he went ten and two in the regular season. I don't, yep. I don't blame him. Yep, I'm with you. I do but, think. But you, 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 are you going to promote from within as a defensive coordinator, or will Lane go to San Antonio and interview a bunch of people? I don't, I don't know. The Charlie Weiss Jr. hire as OC didn't get anybody hot and bothered, and nope. evidently, unless they pull Jackson Dart or somebody else of some kind of name recognition. It may not get anybody hot and bothered at the quarterback position with the transfer portal. And, you know, we'll see if Lane goes into San Antonio and really interviews a bunch of people. Or maybe he's bringing people through Boca Raton. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Look, he's got a fat new contract, so he's not worried about anything. $7.3 million in Oxford slash Boca Raton goes a long way. So he's getting rich either way, and he gave Ole Miss a monster. They they went six and two. That's hard. They went six and yeah. two in conference. It's incredible. Play. That it's is incredible. a big boy record. Yeah, and yet the I think there is something to be said that both fan bases, because of where we are and how we've always approached football, this concept of accepting that your two head coaches spend more of their off season not in your town <laughs> is something that neither fan base is comfortable with. I agree with that. I agree. I, it is a different deal that that Leach and Kiffin spend time in South Florida, and it's one that you're right, especially on the message boards that track every transaction. Yes, they struggle with. Well, it's the same group but, of people but who Mike has had. Leach has had more continuity with the staff, Correct. and so there's a little more comfort factor, even though Lane's two and zero in the Golden Egg. Yeah, and and look, and the, had the great season and finished number eight in the country, and had. Had a top 10 finish, which Ole Miss usually does yeah. not have, and yeah. had arguably the best regular season in the history of the program. That's why it's so much fun to talk about. Lane Train and the Pirate, baby. What does the future look like of your roster? 
More importantly, what will your roster look like on Labor Day weekend? We'll have Day Bar 2 coming up next, the Out of Bounds Show. 105.9 The Zone ESPN, brought to you by Chris Corley, Angel Oak Home Loans. Chris Corley, Angel Oak Home Loans. He'll shout the best rates for you. We're live in the Bank Plus studio. Show is brought to you by the delicious pizza at Sal Mookie's Bar. You're listening to the Out of Bounds Podcast, powered by Welcome Home Beef. For the highest quality fillets, ribeyes, well, any cut of beef, you want to try Welcome Home Beef. Find it at a grocery store near you. Everybody, listen carefully. You're listening to the SEC Insider Hit on the Bolt Bound Show. Fueled by Fleetway Market. Fuel up your car and cooler at Fleetway this football season. Let's go. Good morning. Welcome in the Out of Bounds Show powered by Fleetway Market. Fuel up at Fleetway Market, 20 locations, over 20 locations in the state of Mississippi. One right around the corner from us in Madison and right around the corner in Gluckstadt. Gluckstadt has the Market Cafe, delicious food, including the pulled pork sandwich, which is absolutely delicious at Fleetway Market and the Market Cafe. Over 20 locations in the state of Mississippi. We're live in the Bank Plus studio. You're listening to 105.9 The Zone, ESPN. We welcome in our friend uh, Dave Bartu. He is somewhere in the Oregon Ducks football building. Not happy with what's going on there. But uh, Bartu, good morning. How are you, sunshine? (laughs) Dude, it is the first week of college football season. I am doing absolutely fantastic, buddy. All right. Dan Lanning was the defensive coordinator at Georgia. He's now the head coach for your alma mater, the Oregon Mm -hmm. Ducks, because Cristobal goes to Miami. Uh, How would you grade what Dan Lanning has done as far as putting together a staff for your Oregon Ducks to date? Um, There's two things to grade, okay? When when you're grading a staff, at least the way we do it, uh, we grade a staff by uh, how well they've recruited in the past, and how well they have coached in the past. Because both are important, right? You can't really overlook one for the other. I, I think we'd all lean a little bit more recruiting than coaching, but, you know, there's a balance. Uh, and with Oregon, there is an imbalance. This is an excellent recruiting staff, okay? Uh, they, they have brought in guys that have reeled in four- and five-star guys from every point in the country, okay? So from a recruiting standpoint, it's all-star staff. From a coaching standpoint, it looks like Georgia Southern experience, okay, because they have brought in a bunch of guys that really their history is not of coaching. It is recruiting. They're not that good of coaches. Um, But where it really counts, defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, they are super limited in experience. And not only are they limited experience, they have zero experience working with each other's pace of play. And what I mean by that is Dillingham is going to have a high octane offense. It's going to be go, 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 go. Everybody on the other side of the defense that that are going to pair with that, because he's going to force that defense to face a lot of plays because of his pace of play. They're not used to that at all. So this, this is a, this is a massive, hydrogen experiment it is going to be glorious one way or the other okay but the problem with the glorious side is we don't know if it'll be good glorious like a beautiful fireworks show or bad glorious fireworks blowing up in the warehouse (laughs) all right so let's move on to dj durkin leaving ole miss and going to a&m what what Mm -hmm. kind of hire is that for jimbo fisher bar two um solid you know, it's a, this is this is a three and a half, four star defensive coordinator, but it's still a downgrade from Mike Elko. Um, you know, the, Jimbo had, you know, he he had a really nice luxury there. I mean, that was a top five defensive coordinator in college football. In fact, your top four scoring efficient defensive coordinators uh, were all hired to be head coaches. You know. Uh, we know it's a copycat league. Sports are copycats. So everybody decided to hire the top defensive coordinators this year. So A&M lost theirs to, where'd he go? Duke, Duke. head Duke. coach. <laughs> Duke. Um, and 
So they were, you know, they replaced him with DJ. Now DJ, when he came into Mississippi, uh, we had him right there, low four-star defensive coordinator. He'd done a lot of good things uh, on the field for his career, and it is, it's a solid hire. Okay, it's a solid hire, but got to understand is for A and M, because where A and M recruits, um, you need somebody elite somewhere. Um, and they don't have that. Jimbo is not an elite play caller. He's a he's a three and a half star kind of guy. Uh, so so Durkin is a better uh, game coach than he is. But combined, it falls short of where I'd like them to be to compete for a national title. Uh, while DJ is solid, uh, was there another five to ten guys? available or well when you're a&m everybody's available right I mean, right. that's the way you got to approach it everybody sure. is available uh money is not an object i think there was a lot of room for improvement there even though the hire is solid okay um if kirby smart promotes will muschamp to defensive coordinator what does dave bar two and the matrix and all that think about that Mm, he's not head coaching, right? Will doesn't get any head coaching because we know that's going to end in a disaster. I mean, he is two for two on disaster movie endings wherever he's been a head coach. So, you know, as defensive coordinator, who, who are you going to get, right? Which Will must champ because we all know Will's put up some darn good years, right? I mean, he has put up some really good defensive years. Um you know, Kirby has his hands all over the defense anyways. And have, we don't even know who really is fully calling all the plays. Um, so I, I think they're fine with that. Uh, I kind of get the feeling as long as Kirby headset on defense, he's going to be fine. Okay. Yeah. But Will Will on his own, though, has, has had some really, you know, when you start looking at the high bar and low bar of potential in a guy, Will has a high ceiling. He's had good defenses. He knows how to put that together. Uh, the the only real question I ever have in these situations is Will wants to do one thing. The number one thing on his list is to be a head coach again. And I know for everybody listening, you just spit your coffee through your nose and it sounds funny, right? But these guys always want a head coach for the most part. It's rare that you get a guy that tastes it and goes, that's not for me. I don't want to be a head coach no more. Um, you know, a lot like of Joe Moorhead off. taking the Akron job for goodness sakes. Right. Right. I mean, just, I want to be a head coach. That is a great example. Um, it got him closer to home and his family. I think health had been in question for him, but I mean, Akron, that was the worst job on the board. I mean, the worst job on the board. I had, I had two head coaches, former head coaches. Now the reason I know, I, I feel I know a lot about the head coach, uh, emotion is that's one of my jobs. I help head coaches, good ones that aren't head coaches right now. We use the analytics to help promote their resume. We help them separate themselves in an interview. We help them uh, bring in a three deep of staff that is really good to the resume. And we use numbers to tell a story that separates a guy. And so time and time again, I work with former head coaches that come to me because why Dave want to be a head coach again. I, I need an edge. I need any, they will do anything to try to get that head coaching job. This is that Akron. But two guys are like, yeah, I'd rather stay state coordinator. I'm not, I'm not taking that job. <laughs> There's, you know, like I am making the coordinator then they will give me for my staff pool. <laughs> <laughs> and and the AD doesn't even like football. I'm not going to Akron. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Day bar two on the bucked up energy guest line and the out of bounds show 105.9 The Zone ESPN. There's a lot of buzz around Jeff Levy right now. He went to Oklahoma. Ole Miss fans are kind of in limbo. I think Levy did the heavy lifting on the recruiting trail. For the lane okay. train. Yeah. And you and I both know that it's Lane's offense. Um, now, Levy could have done still a great job in, in a support role. We we just listened to Matt Corral's, some of audio of him being on a podcast. And he said, look, man, mm -hmm. Levy took me through something that he called flight school. 
where we did all this stuff in the film room. And he said, you know, Lane wasn't there. So I think Lane right. likes to do practice and games. And obviously he's a hell of a play caller. Um, but for you, the jury is still out on really what Jeff Levy is on a true, because he's going to get the, you know, Venables has given him the keys to the Lambo, right? Mm-hmm. And so now, isn't your mindset, now we get to see exactly what Jeff Levy is or isn't going forward, or two? I, I, would, I would agree. I would say you can't grade him, right? This is, this, this is where everybody's going to grade the higher, and it's like, how do you grade the higher when you don't even know if this guy's called to play before? Okay, he may be a brilliant uh, at recruiting. He may be brilliant at coaching and coaching these guys up from a quarterback coach standpoint. But we don't, you know, when when the, when the rounds get live, we don't know exactly who he is because if he has called plays, when, where, you know, I don't have the numbers. So to me. Uh, when it comes down to grading Jeff Levy, it's zero. It's wait and see, you know. So uh, Oklahoma fan getting out over their skis that, oh, our offense is going to be just as good and just as awesome. <laughs> Let's pull the reins in, get this horse down to a nice, slow walk down the trail, okay? We're going to set the bar of expectations really low, and if he exceeds them, cool. Cool. Okay, let's get excited if the offense comes around in the next two or three years, as you would expect. But I think with a Jeff Levy, uh, you you just can't grade the guy because we don't know exactly what he's going to be able to do. Venables is just taking the risk that this guy's experience and all of his relationships is going to rub off to give Oklahoma uh, a top 20 offense. Dave Bartu on the Out of Bounds show. All right, Dave. If now that Durkin is gone, Kiffin hasn't made Mm -hmm. a hire. He may go get a sitting D.C. with a lot of experience play calling, but there's someone on the staff, Chris Partridge, who has never, he was the co-D.C. under Durkin, but he's Mm -hmm. never called, you know, like you said, when the live bullets are flying. So he's never called plays. Where where are you on that if, if, if Kiffin promotes this Partridge guy? Man, emotionally, you know, I'm I'm always uh, I get a I get a little twitchy when people start saying next man up uh, because I saw it work so good here in Oregon and I saw it work so bad here in Oregon. Um, it scares me because it's it's I find it I always find it hard to believe that the best guy available is the next guy in line, you know, because because Durkin was good DC, real good. We just talked about it. You know, so you're you're telling me that the you know out of all the DCs and all the potential guys out there, that the very next guy for the best guy for Ole Miss was right behind him. Wow, right? I mean, that's pretty impressive, uh, coach recruiting and building a staff to begin with. So, uh, wow, well, he may turn out to be great, might be better DJ, right? And, you know, the the mind might be there, and and everything might be sharp. And, and we've seen it out of the gate. We've seen Joe Brady's show up and do great things. Um, so, again, this is just like Levy. You, you you can't be excited about that hire. You can't be down on it. You know, I mean, unless you conclusively knew that, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a guy available. It's like, oh, you know, Venables. We could have got – we could have got Venables. But, you know, but instead we went next man up. I mean, unless you know you could have got a guy that is a rock star – um, you can't get too down on it, but you really, again, can't get over the skis on being excited about a guy with zero experience coming in for the first year. What about Sark at Texas and and mm. the fact that they, I mean, I don't think we were expecting to go 11 and one, but I mean, they had a rough, rough year. Where are you with the Sark, and it's early, but where are you with the Sark Texas experience? Experiment. Oh, man, yeah. I mean, I mean, we weren't expecting eleven and one, but we weren't expecting that steaming pile either, were we? I mean, good <laughs> lord. I mean, you know, no, seriously. I mean, come on, let's make our draft board of like three worst coaching performances of twenty twenty one, and that's one of them. You know, you can make an argument that was the worst one. You know, because I mean, this is this is a program. He took over top fifteen offense from twenty twenty. He took over a top. 40 defense from 2020. He's in the Big 12, dude. I mean, the Big 
12. Oklahoma State won that conference with the 63rd ranked scoring efficiency offense. Good. It wasn't grief. like it wasn't there for taking, right? Now, I'm I'm belittling Oklahoma's awesome defense in saying that. Okay, so let's just let's call it the way it is. They got lucky a few times and their defense was elite, but their offense was 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 not good. It was average at best. Um and Texas, uh they recruited I mean he he was the under the top ten recruiter. This is, this is a program that over the last four years was a top 10 recruiter in college football, top 15 offense, top 40 defense. And what did he do? Was it four and eight? Blake, was Three it four and eight? eight? We're checking. Will the thrill? It Check was, on that, was, please. I know, what the, I know what the coach effect was. What okay? was it? And, and we all know that in your first year, Five and seven. I call any I call anybody more than minus four. We know that's dead man walking, right? Because mm-hmm. those guys get fired. Uh, almost ninety percent of the time they get fired. If you start your career, not a career, but you start as a new head coach uh, at a place minus four coach effect or worse the first year, over ninety percent of the guys are fired by year four. Sark was minus six. He was the worst in the country. That's incredible. It was an abomination what happened to that team this year. So in a weak I'm conference betting, where they're the yep. number one recruiter, correct, Bartu? Uh number one, number two, right there with Oklahoma. Okay. Right? I'm mean, right right right, Boy, right in there. You know, I, I like him, but that is hard to do. Five and seven, number one recruiter in a weak, weak conference with not many top twenty top twenty five or even top thirty recruiters in that conference. Right, Bartu? Uh it, it it is the equivalent of Michigan or Ohio State going five and seven. It is the equivalent of Oregon going five and seven. It is the equivalent of um Miami and Clemson. Maybe Miami. You know, I mean they don't even recruit at that level going five and seven. It was it's, you know, and look what was inherited. I mean that team was good. Uh, in 2020, I mean, it was it was it was like a field goal or two away from like 11 and one or mm-hmm. 10 and one or whatever the heck COVID record they could have had, but I just wow, you know, I just, I kept waiting for it to turn. I'm like, oh no, give it some time, give it some time. And the offense was good. Look, it was a top 15 offense. They scored a gazillion points. Defense was bottom 20 in the country which shocked the hell out of me because Pete Kajkowski was running it, and that guy's never had anything less than a really good defense. So I think with Texas... Isn't that, all right, talk about how crazy that is. I mean, he, you had him as what? Maybe not an A-plus, but A defensive coordinator? I mean, oh, one of one of the top uh, defensive uh, coordinators in the country? Level. Right, Elko level, you know. So, uh, so put Randall that in level. perspective for our listeners, how bad Texas was on defense Considering they hired a defensive coordinator with an excellent track record, Bartu, I, I can't, I can't even quantify it. I literally, I'm speechless. I mean, I, I wouldn't if, if no. I, I mean, this, this is one of those situations where if you know, you're like, here, you got a hundred bucks to bet on Pete Kajkowski at Texas, and all he has to do is have a top seventy-five defense, and you double your money. Dude, I'd have, I'd have put, I'd, I'd made that bet. You know, I'd have asked how high the limit is, literally, because there is no way inside the numbers. And this is one of the beautiful things about college football: trying to project what the hell is going to happen, right? Um, there is no way I would have even guessed. It would have even crossed my mind that he'd have had a bottom half defensive scoring efficiency, let alone bottom twenty-five. I mean, it was just, it was flat bad. So. Uh, do I expect it to stay that way? No, I don't. You know, this might be one of those situations where uh, everybody's selling their stock because of the bad performance, and I'm looking at the the entire key of what Ty Kowski has done as a defensive coordinator. So I, I think it'll get turned around, but there is no I'm, – I'm just in shock just talking about it right now, man. I mean, I just can't even believe it. It was that bad. Uh, but then again, you know, cheers. That's Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan. I mean, man, can, can you imagine behind the curtain at that place? That place must be a booster zoo nightmare. It, it has to be, Bartu. Just you, you look at my whole life, you look at the last 50 years, Mac Brown bottled it for five minutes from about 03 to 06. And other than that, man, 
they just haven't gotten it done. Part two. I mean, it's just no. Yeah. Uh, it's it's fun because we can pick on them because it's not us. It's funny because it's not us. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. The last decade, Mississippi State and Ole Miss have had more success than uh the Texas Longhorns. All right. Um, and you know what they have to fight every year. Let's talk Dan Mullen. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. I I get the sense that Mullen's going to sit out and uh and kind of reboot. Um, and. I think he'll get head coaching job offers, but he could get some OC job offers. Would you see? Could you see that in the future? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, 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 absolutely. I've been trying to track him down. You know, I've been doing, I've been in the back, uh, you know, back channels doing coaching searches for coaches, and uh, I, you know, I'd love to know what's on his mind. It certainly seems from social media, it's just family and having fun and relaxing. You know, I mean, this is the first time he's had a December, January off, and what? 20 years yeah you know i mean it's been forever and it's not like the guy isn't independently wealthy at this point he don't need to go back to it god wouldn't it be great if he just walked away forever that'd be cool i mean kudos to him you know because i mean that's kind of kind of the dream right retire early sure no more oh yeah you know um but would he be a, a massive splash hire for somebody you know, you want to try, you want to talk about about a guy that let's say you brought him in as offensive coordinator for a couple of years. Could you imagine the emotional splash if you bring Dan Mullen out as your quarterback coach, offensive coordinator, even if it's for a season? What does that do for the the emotion of the players and the fans and the boosters? Oh man, I'm, there's there's plenty of programs that would probably kill for that. Like Bama. So, I mean, but, let's say Bill O'Brien takes a job, which is amazing to me that he's you know, in, in contention for NFL head coaching jobs. But anyway, let's say that happens. Mm-hmm. And and you drop Dan Mullen. I've only got about a minute and a half, two minutes. You drop Dan yeah. Mullen at, at Bama as the OC. What does it, what does it mean? Where does that it go? Would, that would be that would be fantastic. Because look, look, Bill O'Brien coming into Alabama, he's a two-and-a-half-star offensive coordinator. Okay. I mean, it's, he's poverty offensive co- coordinator. All right. Not good at all. And in fact, uh, the only time Nick Saban has hired a offensive coordinator that is three star or less in our system, um, Loxley and O'Brien hasn't been able to win it. So Mullen, you're looking at a three and a half star offensive coordinator. Uh, he would be a massive, massive, massive upgrade to O'Brien. Um, and as long as he was calling the plays, I don't see Bama losing a national title, and that would be fun for him too. And, you know, could you imagine going through everything, you know, all the pressures, and then you get to be, you get to kind of relax. I don't think you can relax around Saban 100, percent but you get right. to have fun and go out and win a national title like you did at Florida. And Coach Bryce Young, man, Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo. that would be, uh, <laughs> and he'd only be 90, 90 miles away from Stark Vegas, Mississippi, where it all started for him. Somewhat. All right, Bar Two. Great stuff, man. Hope you're doing well. Uh, uh, things are going well with, with FIU? Oh, the, the FIU search, that's one of them that has been just absolutely rock star. I, I couldn't, I was stoked beyond belief to get Yost to sign as uh, the OC there. We got a couple more surprises coming down the pipe. That was going to be a hell of a staff for, for uh, Conference USA here in a bit. Have a good day, dude. See you, buddy. Take Thanks. Easy, brother. Day bar two. At CFB Matrix on Twitter, Dave joined us on the Corona Premier guest line. Corona Premier guest line. The Out of Bounds Show is brought to you by Fondren Fitness. Oh, what a workout facility and gym. Fondren Fitness in Fondren. The Out of Bounds Show is powered by Fondren Fitness. You're looking to set your workout goals. Get healthy. Do what you need to do. Well, you want to start with Fondren Fitness. Fitness in Fondren. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful facility there that they have in Fondren. Fondren Fitness, check it out. We'll be back uh, tomorrow for Football Friday. See ya. See ya.